Most of us have felt lonely at some time in our lives, whether the death of a loved one, a divorce, our children have left home, we've got emptiness syndrome, maybe just because we're home alone. But what about the elderly who've lost a spouse and have lo lost many of their friends? Many of them are feeling lonely and their children have scattered and they're living lives of their own. And we're going to talk about loneliness in the elderly and how it can affect their health. And we're also going to talk about a study that has an effective method of reducing loneliness that you can do alone. There are a lot of things that loneliness does to us when we're in that state of mind, Vicki. And one of the things it does is it's, it's really linked uh, to conditions like Alzheimer's disease and depression and premature death. And there was a study done at UCLA uh, that was published in Brain Behavior and Immunity where they looked at uh, a course of meditation, it's called mindfulness meditation, where you really come into the present tense and try and be in the zone of life. So you're really focused on what's happening in the moment. And they did it for only eight weeks and they found out that less loneliness was the result of that and also that there was less inflammation. And inflammation is a big cause of disease. Uh, it sure is. And and what they did is is they measured the uh, levels of C-reactive protein, which is one of the most important inflammatory markers, and some others, one called uh, NF-kappa-beta, which is not familiar to most of you, but one that marks the level of inflammation in the body. And what they did is they looked at 40 people who were between the ages of 55 and 85, and they used this mindfulness type of meditation, and half of the people were in the group that did the meditation, the other half weren't. And what they found was is that the group that was in the mindfulness meditation uh, had much less in the way of inflammation, and they were more, uh, they were less anxious in their life. So it was a simple program, really. They just did this for about 30 minutes a day. They had a weekly two-hour meeting, and uh, they had a one-day-long retreat. And this is all over eight weeks. And well, you know, many elderly uh, don't sleep well, and their minds are racing and going on, and many mm -hmm. of them worry, and, they, and they're sad, and they have a lot of things to, that bother them. And I guess what the key is, is to be present. If you can be in the present moment with this mindfulness type of medication, meditation, and can teach this to the elderly. And I also think, you know, other ways, ways of doing this would be Tai Chi and yoga. And I think that that's a really healthy thing for the elderly, too, because... It, well, Not only is it good for their minds, but it's good for their bodies to, for balance and a little bit of stretching. I think that anything we do to be in the moment is, is the idea here, because fortunately we humans aren't so smart. We can't multitask in our minds and be in two places at once. So if we are focused on just one thing, we're in what I call the zone of the present or the zone of life, whether it be doing meditation, uh, when you're trying to just relax and let thoughts come and go, or you're playing tennis, or you're engaged in any kind of activity where you're present. That really saves you from all the anxiety and stress and depression that may be in your life because of what's happened in the, in the, in the past. And we don't want to forget about the caregivers either because people that are caring for the elderly, especially if they have something like Alzheimer's, they need some support too and they need to get present and focused and so forth. Um, being old can pose a lot of problems and you can see why these people are worried about their future and everything. You know, just I want to just take a minute to promote a book that's called The Boomer's Guide to uh, Aging Parents. And it's by Carolyn Rosenblatt. It's an excellent, excellent book. And I would recommend that any, anybody get this book um, that has an elderly parent or an elderly loved one, or if you're getting a hold of yourself to help you to plan ahead because it, it answers questions that you might not even have thought of to ask. Well, our, our tendency is to use medications when things don't go right. We're anxious, we're depressed, we don't sleep well. We go to the doctor, and the doctor's trained to solve our problems by solving our symptoms, but not the underlying cause. You know, just last week we were talking about lavender to prevent falls in the elderly. Well, and that helps to relax people, too. Exactly. And we also tend to think it's the neurotransmitter levels in the brain that are the primary cause of these symptoms, but they really aren't. I think that what happens is this, the problems that we have that lead to anxiety and depression and all the things that go with it are what we're trying to deal with as the primary thing and the neurotransmitter levels follow. So if we try to change those levels by giving antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs or supplements or herbs, we're doing the same thing. 
What people really need is to be listened to and cared for. They need the human touch. They Go need, visit the people that are old and lonely. Yeah, be with them, just like they were with you when they were raising you, if, if they're your parents. <laughs> yeah, hopefully is right. So this whole topic of loneliness is a big one. And as we age, we're faced with new tasks all the time, and we have to adjust to that. Our bodies fail us as we age uh, compared to when we we're younger. Our minds can sometimes, so we don't use them, we lose them. And when we're lonely, I think the answer, Vicki, is, is not so much to be thinking about drugs and, and technologies. It's more to do what we need, and that's to be with people, support them, listen to them. And if we do, the loneliness will be dealt with a lot better because these people will feel cared for. And also to think carefully about what you're going to do with your elderly loved one because whether you put them in an assisted living facility or you put them in a nursing home and is it enough to just have them have a caretaker and you not go visit them because then you figure well they're okay because they're being taken care of but that's being taken care of physically not mentally and we need to take care of both and emotionally so we do all those things chances are that the loneliness that we see as we lose our, our capacity to do things and we lose our friends will probably be a lot less and better tolerated. <laughs> 